Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm gonna be doing another egg white bread recipe today. I am going to make some baguettes. I am going to use the proofing yeasted method. So I will actually have them rise gives incredible flavor to the bread. I am going to be using as the base recipe my yeasted butter buns recipe. I think that'll work really, really well for some really nice baguettes. Also, while those are rising, I am going to make an olive oil bread dip. Back when I was a teenager, I worked at a health food store, New Seasons Market here in Oregon, and there was a product that they carried. Um, I think it was from the Bread Dip Company. They had all these different bread dips made with olive oil and different things, and one of them was just my absolute favorite, and it was feta pink peppercorn. And I don't know all of the spices that were in there because it just says on the you know label spices in the ingredients, which is not very helpful, but I am going to do my best to recreate that. If I have the pink peppercorns and the feta and the olive oil, I think I can get pretty close. And I thought that would be perfect to go with my baguettes. I didn't think when I decided to live a keto, low carb lifestyle that I would ever get to be able to enjoy that kind of a thing anymore, like olive oil, vinegar, bread dip. But amazingly, with the egg white bread recipes, you can actually enjoy those things again. I also have a feeling that this bread dip recipe would be really good on like chicken or on salads, different things like that. So I think it's gonna be pretty versatile. So let's get started with the baguettes first. If you are like me, you have a container of frozen shredded butter all ready to go in your freezer. Uh, but if you are not like me and uh, you don't have the frozen shredded butter already, the first thing you're gonna wanna do for this recipe is put butter in the freezer, let it freeze solid, and then grate it while it's frozen. For this recipe, you're gonna need one stick or one half of a cup of butter. Since I make a lot of recipes with frozen shredded butter, I just go ahead and shred an entire pound at a time and keep it in my freezer. After you shred it, go ahead and put it back into the freezer until it's time to add it to the recipe. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my yeast proofing in my warm water. I want 236 milliliters of water that's between 100 and 110 degrees. It's just above at about 120, so I'm gonna let that cool off for just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and stir in my one teaspoon of inulin. You can also use honey here or any kind of sugar and the yeast will eat it up, so you shouldn't have to worry about those sugar carbs in the end product. The yeast needs something to eat, and it can eat inulin, it can eat sugar. Uh, it cannot eat allulose. I did look that up because I'd love to be able to just use allulose because it's already in the recipe, but sadly yeast cannot eat that. All right, I'm right at 110 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my yeast. This is just regular active dry yeast. We're gonna do two and a quarter teaspoons, which is the same amount that would be in a packet of yeast and I believe it's nine grams. I'm just sprinkling it over the top of my warm water. I'm gonna go put this down in my dehydrator. My dehydrator is set to 105 degrees and I'm gonna have it sit there and bloom while I get the other ingredients mixed up. Now in my KitchenAid bowl, I'm gonna to mix together all the dry ingredients and that's starting with 100 grams of egg white powder, egg white protein powder, dried egg whites, as long as the only ingredient is egg whites, um, they should all work. Next is a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, one half teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt, one tablespoon of gelatin powder. I use beef gelatin and one tablespoon is about 10 grams. Next is two tablespoons of allulose and this allows for browning. You're not really doing it for sweetness, but it makes the bread softer and it helps the bread to actually brown and it gives a really good texture. Uh, 18 grams is two tablespoons. Then we're gonna add two tablespoons of acacia fiber powder, and this gives a really good texture as well as some structure to the bread. Two tablespoons is 12 grams. I'm gonna just give this a little mix, and then I'm gonna head down and get my wet yeast mixture out of the dehydrator. My yeast is nice and foamy and ready to go. 
The last ingredient I'm gonna add at this point is the arrowroot powder, and you do need this in this recipe. In a lot of my recipes, the arrowroot is optional. In this one, the um, yeast actually eats the arrowroot and that's what allows for it to rise. So I do recommend adding it. And same with the inulin or the sugar that you use, the yeast should eat it. So the finished product should not have the same amount of carbs as the ingredients starting. Unfortunately, I do not have the technology to be able to test exactly how many carbs are left at the end or if the yeast eats all of it. I do not know that. I do know that it doesn't spike my blood sugar, but it's just something for you to keep an eye on. And even at the original amount, the amount of carbs that this arrowroot adds, it's just two tablespoons, is very, very minimal. So you're gonna get a very low carb product either way. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of arrowroot to my wet mixture, and that is 16 grams. I'm gonna give that a little whisk here and then add my wet ingredients to my dry ingredients. Just gonna mix this to get everything moistened and then we will head over to the KitchenAid. Gonna start the mixer out on low and slowly increase the speed to high so it doesn't splatter and then just mix it for about five minutes but until I get a really nice thick texture. It's been going about five minutes and we've got like a marshmallow cream type texture. That's what you're wanting. Now I'm gonna add in my frozen shredded butter and also my one teaspoon of butter flavor. This is completely optional. Just gives it a little, little extra flavor there. And I'm gonna do 120 grams of the butter because that's one half a cup or one stick. And I should say it's one half a cup of butter not shredded when after you shred it of course it's going to have a lot more volume so don't measure out a half a cup at this point measure out 120 grams just going to get this barely mixed up and then we'll get this into our pan getting this all stirred up make sure i have everything incorporated and then this is the baguette pan I'm gonna be using. It's a mesh silicone pan. I did spray it with avocado oil just to be on the safe side. And I went ahead and got my ice cream scoop ready. I thought if I scooped it in there and then spread it out, that would probably be the cleanest way to do that. I'm not sure how many baguettes I'll get, maybe three. And you can see I did cut off one. This had five wells in it, um, but because I want it to fit into my dehydrator to proof, I cut it down a little bit. All right, looks like just two fit, and I'm just trying to get these a little bit smoothed out so they look pretty, although as they rise, they will kind of spread out, I think. So I don't need to work too hard on that. I am gonna go ahead and sprinkle these with flake salt. If you wanna add toppings, you should do it before you proof because the proofing kind of dries out the top and the, the toppings will not stick quite as well. This is my Morton's Flake Salt that I love. This is ready to head down into the dehydrator for one hour. All right, temperature is set to 105. Time was just set on, a, on a eight hours. I'll put it down to one hour. So we can time this well, and there we go. While the baguettes are proofing, I'm gonna get the bread dip mixed up. Um, I got my rosemary and my oregano out of the garden this morning. They're doing really well in the garden. I have some fresh basil, uh, some garlic cloves that I'm gonna crush up. Then I have some black pepper, some apple cider vinegar. If you're not worried about a little bit of carbs, you can add uh, balsamic vinegar. And then my olive oil, and I have to give a big shout out to The Bright Angle. They sent me this incredible olive oil bottle. 
I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. If you have not seen their porcelain products, I definitely recommend going and checking out their website, their color palette, and just the, the design are just absolutely beautiful. So I am very excited to add this to my kitchen. I do have a discount code for you guys if you wanna go check these out. Um, I will put it down in the description below. First off, I'm gonna get my herbs all minced up. All right, then I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of the basil, about one tablespoon of the rosemary, and about one tablespoon of the oregano also. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell this. It already smells amazing. These are the pink peppercorns, and if you have never tried pink peppercorns, I recommend it. They are delicious. Um, one thing about them is they're not, as hard or as intense as black peppercorns. When you bite into one, it's it's kind of hollow and it's kind of hard to describe, but it's not like biting into a black peppercorn at all. And so in this recipe, I'm putting them in whole. I would never do this with black peppercorns, but with pink peppercorns, it works. I'm gonna do two teaspoons. I am gonna add some black pepper also, just a quarter of a teaspoon. Then for the liquids, I always like to use my kitchen scale so I don't have to get measuring spoons or cups dirty. Um, I'm gonna do two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, which is about 30 grams or one ounce. And then I'm gonna drizzle in about a half a cup of olive oil which is about 120 grams. Oh, I'm not gonna do that much. I'm gonna do a third of a cup, 80 grams. That looks beautiful. Now I'm gonna add in my feta cheese, probably about a quarter cup of crumbles. That's my guess at least. I think more than a quarter of a cup, probably a half a cup. Look at how incredible that is already looking. Oh my gosh. I'm mashing the feta just to get it to be combined a little bit more so it's really easy to dip the bread into. And I'm thinking this looks really, really Christmassy. You could totally serve this at Christmas. It's got the red berries and the green and the white feta, like snow. It's really, really pretty. The baguettes are almost finished proofing, so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 325. Proofing time is done. I'm going to take these upstairs. The top gets like uh, dry. That's how you want it. Let's get these in the oven. I'm going to carefully transfer these over to my baking sheet that's lined with a silicone liner just to keep the mess down. And you can see that it lost a little bit of butter um, during the proofing time, but really not very much. As long as you have something solid underneath the, um, the silicone pan, you shouldn't lose a lot of butter. If you just set it onto the wire rack in the dehydrator, the butter will seep out. So definitely have something solid underneath. I am gonna see if I can get some slices on these baguettes. We'll see how that works out. All right, these are ready to throw into the 325 degree oven. I expect it'll take about 25 minutes. Look at how beautiful these are. Oh my gosh, and they smell so, so good. I cannot wait to dig in. Uh, I'm gonna let them cool for about five or 10 minutes on in the pan and then I will take them out of the pan and let them cool probably a little bit more before I try to cut them and taste test them. All right, I'm gonna give this a little slice and then we're gonna taste it with the bread dip. Ooh, look at the inside texture on this. Doesn't that look amazing with all the big bubbles in there? Oh my gosh. 
got to try the crusty end of the baguette with some of this bread dip. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Look at that. I'm going to taste it. You guys. Oh my gosh. That. Wow. That is incredible. Okay. Seriously, I can just make a meal out of this. The pop of flavor from the pink peppercorns and the creamy cheese, the fresh herbs. Oh my gosh. And I even forgot to put flake salt on top. I have this sitting here and I meant to sprinkle some flake salt on top of this right before dipping. Wow. Okay, so the great thing about this bread, it is very high percentage protein. So you pretty much could make a meal out of just bread and dip. All right, let me try this with the salt. Oh my gosh. Oh man, there is so much flavor packed in here. It is absolutely phenomenal. The pink peppercorns taste like these spicy little berries and they kind of like pop and crunch. It's hard to describe, you just have to try it. Oh, this is so good. I, I think this is just gonna be my lunch today. It's a good thing I'm the only one in the family who likes this kind of thing because I'm totally gonna double dip. This um, dip, I do believe would be very good on chicken. If you had any leftover after eating it as bread dip, definitely recommend putting it on chicken. This is one of the best things I've tasted in a long time. I don't know how long, but it is so, so good. 100% recommend. Thank you so much for hanging out in the kitchen with me today and doing some baking and recipe figuring out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you try this. Let me know if you have had pink peppercorns before and if you like them and like how you had them. It's something that I want to work into more of my recipes, but it just has to be the right fit, you know? So this is perfect. It goes with feta, great. Uh, let me know if you had them in other recipes. I would love to know. Please go check out the Bright Angle and all of their beautiful products. They have these olive oil bottles in all different beautiful colors. And then they also have all kinds of little vases and cups and bowls. It's just beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. And um, I'm just loving this and so excited to have it in my kitchen. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will just see you again in the next one. And I am gonna go eat this. <laughs>